LSD was discovered by Swissy Albert Hoffmann in Octagon, Switzerland of the Nazi Templars in 1938 by Hoffmann Laroche. Then it got commercialized by Sandoz Chemicals of Basel 19, in 1948. Uh, which is now the biggest chemical industries in the world, called Novartis, also working for the worldwide Swiss military industrial complex, especially concerning LSD. But how do you commercialize a product like LSD, which is bad for you, so you can't sell it as a beauty cream or in some health store making, uh, making you younger pills? Where do you sell bad things? Well, to the military, of course. So, with Swiss gay Edgar Hoover, real name Huba, already in place at the FBI, and Swiss President Eisenhower, and Swiss head of the CIA, Alan Dulles, all coming up in exactly the same time, Swiss he tried to make fortune out of their LSD, selling it as a fantastic mind control product to the CIA, which was already practically in the hands of the Swiss Octagon by that time. So simultaneously, CIA's mind control programs artichoke under MK Ultra started off. Why MK, by the way? Well, because in Swiss German, control, as in MK, mind control, so control with a C, in German is being written with a K, MK Ultra, the Ultima Mind Control. At the same time, the Korean War was raging on, and the Koreans were winning through their sheer numbers by Chinese backup. So an anti-personnel weapon had to be brought in. So the USA, and already in Octagon's hands, used biological weapons against the people of Korea. Terrible crimes against humanity in the name of a free America. And Swissy laughing behind the screens. Just as later repeated with Agent Orange against the people of Vietnam and their children. But for a biological weapon and brain killer, you need to do some testing first. And in a more nearby countries, so the test results can be officially looked through the authorities of some allied controlled state. Therefore, Swissy and their Octogon decided some terrible crime in France on August the 15th, 1951. After which, only five days later, on August the 20th, 1951, Project Artichoke under the MK Mind Control Ultra Ultra, the MK Ultra officially started. Look at it, same expression, look at his eyes as the man in France. And here, another one of those shooters. Yeah, look at the man's eyes, it's the same as all the others. So within five years after LSD, an enormous organized Swiss evil was let loose on the world. And I wonder with what they treated me, additionally to the oxygen deprivation in those Swiss torture facilities, in which I spent three and a half months in 2015. And actually, I had the same look as um, the French guy who was being carried away and those the, the other two I just showed you. The same look with the, in the eyes. So what did they do? Well, apparently it needs more, you know, to bring a South African down, fortunately. The CIA's experiment on an entire French village, including their children, led to the death of eight innocent French people and numerous locked up for the rest of their lives in a mental institution. In the same week, the MK Ultra mind control started and used against the Koreans and their children too. So yeah, Swissy did it again, making one hell of a deal, adding more to their accumulated wealth. Well, money has no color, they say. 
even if it smells like blood. And just follow the money trail, which will always lead you to Switzerland and the biggest perpetrator of the most vicious of crimes. And here he says it himself, Albert Hoffman. Before LSD got onto the streets in the 1960s, or we know about that, we were able to gather a lot of therapeutic experiences, you know, on innocent, you know, patients. And in France, the substance was used in the psychoanalysis of patients who couldn't be talked to. You know, yeah, you couldn't be talked to anymore to those French people, eh? They say it themselves. He knows it, <laughs> of course. So let's look at the time perspective and the dates to see that it's not a coincidence, but organized crime. LSD got commercialized under the name of Delizid in 1948. Korean War from 1950 to 1953. Project Artichoke MKUltra 1951. Test LSD in French village in same week, 1951. Frank Olsen died in 1953. Swiss Eisenhower, President, January 20, 1953. Also 1953, February 26, Swiss Alan Dulles, head of the CIA. And Swissy Alan Dulles already worked for IG Farben, promoting Zyklon B, being already large in, largely in the poison business, having lots of experience. And he spent many years in Bern, the capital of Switzerland, with the apocalyptic bear, bear in its logo, coat of arms. So on August 15, 1951, and five days before the official start of Mind Control Ultra, on August 20th, 1951, Swissy started Project Artichoke by poisoning the people of the small village of Pont Saint-Esprit by putting the LSD made in Octagon, Switzerland, in the flour for all the local bakeries. Knowing that a true Frenchman won't start the day without a piece of his notorious French bread, not only looking like a baseball bat, but on this infamous day would knock him and his wife and children literally out of their socks and off their feet. Eight people died, hundreds in asylums, People thinking their bellies were eaten by snakes. An 11 year old who strangled his grandmother. People believing they were planes jumping out of windows, seeing apocalyptic beasts and believing their hearts left them through their feet. Oh yeah, Swissy making big bucks here while US Air Force using it on the Koreans. And I tell you guys over there, concerning Swiss Obama's actual gun grabber deal, that Octagon capable of doing it, and on the Koreans and the Frenchies, they will not hesitate to poison the gun owners in the USA, using Swiss made LSD through Octagon CIA, now even domestic enemy. So you ain't eat French bread coming weeks, yeah? You all preppers make your own flour. This is what the Octagon would lo love most. Poison all the gun owners so they get crazy just as in that French town and all shoot each other. Anyway, it's the first amendment thereafter. But to get the first down, they have to kill the second first. Because it's the second that protects the first, and nobody can be emotionally manipulated by one of Obama's tears to eradicate the First Amendment of free speech. It's the First Amendment they after, believe me, because the pen is mightier than the sword, especially what I'm telling you here is very dangerous to them. Because it puts a name face and location 
in your crosshairs and on the bullseye. And as I always do to get the whole picture, let's have a look at history. The name of that French village is Pont Saint-Esprit, which means the Holy Spirit Bridge. And it's quite a special name for a village, therefore needing more thorough investigation for a name like that. And yes, the bridge was built from 1265 till 1309, in the time the T Templars founded Switzerland in 1291. And in fact it was built by the Templars who called it like that, because everything went so well building the bridge that God's Holy Spirit must have been there. This is the reason, in fact, why the Swiss Octogon attacked that particular village for the LSD experiment in 1951. Because they felt betrayed, they built a beautiful bridge for France, and by the end of it was 1307, Friday the 13th, getting persecuted by the French king, needing to leave and just give away the beautiful Holy Spirit bridge. In a time when they saw it coming and therefore founded Switzerland, the fortress in the Alps, mountains, on August 1st, 1291. Swissy never forgets anything, except for their own crimes, of course. And as you can see, they're more than just complicit in this huge crime providing the LSD weapon of mass destruction. But Swissy ordered, financed and organize, organi organized it too. As I told you so, Switzerland of the Nazi Templars somehow always has that dirty little fingers in it. So here you can read some articles and some newspapers. I put it in the... Uh in the links in the descriptions for you. And here's some more in another newspaper about this horrible Swiss crime by Octagon. And here's some more, another article. Well, the devil's biggest weapon is deception. And Swissy always hides everything in mysterious ways, silent as ever. Some of you people might have watched the Hollywood film Enemy of the State with famous actors like Will Smith, Gene Hackman and John Voight, in which an important politician gets suicided and then thrown into a lake. But few people know that it was based upon the suicidation of the French Minister of Labour Affairs on October 29, 1979, at the age of 59 only and almost at the top of his career. And I say almost because this honest and straightforward man would have made next president of France if not the Swiss Octogon of the Nazi Templars would have had something against that. His name was Robert Boulin and he was a member of the French resistance fighting the Germans during the war. Reason enough for Swiss Octogon to get rid of him permanently and for good, period. Uh, Robert Boulin was an honest and sincere Frenchman and a Gaullist, meaning following the line of General Charles de Gaulle. And he sincerely loved France, having risked his life for La France during the war, a fighter who would never surrender nor kill himself. Only Octogon is powerful enough to organize the suicidation of an influential minister of a European state. And now, 35 years later, the Swiss Octogon has their man, Manuel Valls, and Prime Minister of France, on place. who is 100% Swiss, as I've shown in this video here, and he has driven France into martial law, or état d'urgence in French after that false flag Swiss financed attack in Paris on Friday the 13th, the day on which the French King Philippe Le Bel sentenced the Swiss Templars to death, being Swiss's revenge on that event and date. Also realizing Swiss Phileas Valder's agenda of a third world war between Christians and Muslims, written down by their man on the podium, Albert Pike. 
by all means relating to Times Friday the 13th and the murder of French minister Robert Boulin, because during the next presidency of socialist François Mitterrand, millions of Arab Muslims were let into France in order to establish the Swiss Templars' revenge on Friday 13, 1307 and the destruction of France due to the French persecution of those Templars who founded Switzerland on August 1st, 1291 and anticipating the problems ahead 16 years later on 1307 on Friday the, thir the 13th. Out of the Templars rose the Freemasons and all key positions in society. So in 1979 the murder investigation was entirely corrupted into a suicide thesis by hiding the fact that Minister Boulin took a severe beating before getting suicided, having bruises all over his body. The corpse had been moved by someone in the water because of the water in his lungs being in the wrong place. Footsteps of a dead corpse in the sand never near the lake leading back to the car and many other twisted proofs. So this is why a couple of weeks back and 35 years later the murder case on French minister Robert Boulin has been reopened recently by his daughter. The name of the lake was Lake Hollande just as the name of the actual French president. And on the day of the murder in this fairly isolated quiet, quiet area cars with Swiss and German number plates were seen. Here in this French documentary on YouTube you can verify about the things I'm telling you and that Minister Boulin told his wife to be afraid of the Swiss and some Swiss called Ernst Sigrist and Kopp who has been described together with some Swiss German pals of them as professional assassins. Nowadays I found one Swiss Ernst Sigrist who happens to be a jeweler in Thun and possibly related to the Nazi gold too. The more when looking at the Swiss red line connection to Argentina of the Nazis and the Frenchman Henri Tournay from Argentina who trapped the minister in a political scandal over some land and money together with the Swiss German sounding name of a man called Hermann Stromberg, a funny name for a Frenchman eh? which is the typical political blackmail thing of octagon to do. First they trap you in a falsely frauded money deal, then they offer you the financial solution with big Swiss money involved. And if you accept you're on their pay list obeying their orders like Bill Clinton after Monica Lewinsky. And if you decline you're a dead man. And Minister Boulin obviously declined because otherwise there would never have been a political scandal at all as things would have been settled without us knowing about it. The Swiss octagon of the Nazi Templars from Switzerland have their fingerprints all over this case with witnesses dying in mysterious car accidents through the Boston Brakes methods like Char Charbonnet leading to South Africa and Guy Aubert with which Switzerland was dealing on all fascist levels. And Klaus Barbie, the Gestapo butcher of Lyon, being officially indicted by France in the same year of 1979, with Swissy playing a huge role in that, with great eminence Francois Junot finding him a lawyer and the Swiss Red Cross giving Klaus Barbie a passport for the Nazi red line to Argentina. And by the way, Klaus Barbie was also involved getting rid of Che Guevara in Bolivia where he tortured and assassinated people for the Bolivian government. Yes, the Swiss octagon stretches out all over the world and it's a Swiss speciality to have people suicided in their prisons and even foreign ministers in lakes 
who re refused to obey octagon of the Nazi Templars from the Alps. And remember that the Swiss have always been murdering in France, as in La Bastille, French citizens were imprisoned and tortured by Swiss mercenaries, sparking into the French Revolution. And the French Foreign Legion getting founded by the Swiss with Swiss officers leading it. See this film about it. So, Swissy killing some French minister oh, is nothing new at all. They've always been doing it. Robert Boulin, the French minister, was suicided in a lake. For any insider knowing enough what happened being a visitor's card of a sacrifice to the widow, also called Isis, with the water standing for Isis. Then one should look around to find the obelisk, or, and, the octagon, to find the place where he was actually murdered. And yes, both, and even more, are right next to the lake, or Etang d'Hollande. Yeah, not far away is the obelisk, symbol of death, and also for power, as on many cemeteries and official state offices, also symbolizing Osiris, where Robert Boulin had died probably after having been severely tortured at the octagon right next to the lake, or the other way around maybe, to which I come back later. And we have here on the map the triangle of Isis, Horus and Seth in a certain way, but not officially, as Seth is the mind behind Osiris obelisk and octagon closely related to the Horus matrix. So the triangle is being formed by uh, Isis for the water, the obelisk and the octagon. And here's the castle of Rambouillet. The octagon table was the hunting table of Louis the Sixteenth, who together with his wife got decapitated under the guillotine during the French Revolution, instigated by the Freemasons and their New World Order, meaning the end of the feudal Old World Order in France. So, for those who understand, this octagon table symbolizes blood, death, Nazi Templars and the death of the monarchy. So I have no doubt that the minister got first beaten at the obelisk, then fatally waterboarded on the octagon table, giving the message away who did it, and then thrown into the lake, upside down from how he was waterboarded. And therefore, the water being in the wrong place in his lungs, namely at the back of his lungs, when he died, when lying with his back on the table, on the octagon table, and not face down in the lake, in the position in which he was found. Waterboarding dates from the Middle Ages and was also done by the Nazis, as by the Nazi Templars from Octagon, Switzerland. You can read it, it says Swissy, Swissy, it says in an old text, Swissy in French, meaning Swissy. And the reason that so many people from both sides were involved covering the case up, that it concerns the internal pharaonic war between the New World Order and the Old World Order, because of which we owe, in fact, the two world wars and the third coming up, and they don't want us to know this. The murder happened in the forest of La Rambouillet near Paris, the traditional hunting grounds of the French kings of the Old World Order and their castle Chateau de Rambouillet, which is now being used for French G7 meetings of the New World Order, where Obama slept, Mandela, Sarkozy, well, the whole bunch of those pharaohs. And the first international G6 summit was held there in 1975, as you can see here and organized by Giscard d'Estaing, of course. So here you can see the, uh, here's Giscard d'Estaing, I think. And here you can see the pharaonic sun hieroglyph in a castle, of course. They're always in castles. They're all pharaohs in the pharaonic palace. 
and even I slept there once, a very long time ago. So here you can see this is from the castle. You see all the octagons here and here and in the ceiling. It's full of octagons, just like the table where the minister got killed and waterboarded. And here you can see the uh, red and white, the original checkerboard of the Freemasons uh, symbolizing Upper and Lower Egypt of the Red House and the White House, the Per Tasse and the Per Het. See my other film about it. By the way, you have to watch all my older videos to understand this all. So, on the traditional grounds of the Old World Order, the symbolic sacrifice was done and leading to the entire takeover of the New World Order in France once again. As President Valéry Giscard d'Estaing slowly was making it clear that the Old World Order wasn't entirely gone yet, by shortly after his election of 1974, having in 1976 their pharaoh ancestor, Ramses the Great being received in Paris with full military honors. Together with the fact that Giscard d'Estaing was a descendant of both French King Louis XV and Charlemagne Carl the Great, and his wife, the daughter of a count and granddaughter of a princess. So, with all this, the New World Order and the Masons understood that Robert Boulin could not become president or prime minister for the Old World Order principle and had to go with an occult message to it and executed by the notorious octagon of the Nazi Templars from Switzerland on the octagon table in the forest of Rambouillet. So therefore, the next president of France, two years later, in 1981, was not Robert Boulin, but a hardcore Nazi in disguise of a socialist for the next 14 years, until 1995, enabling millions of Muslims to settle in France for Octagon's Albert Pike Nazi agenda, only made possible in disguise of a socialist government issuing humanitarian standards. And I'll show you the links and proofs at the end of the video. The name of that president was François Mitterrand, a Nazi who worked for Vichy and the Nazis, who every year put flowers on the grave of Hitler's man in France, Marshal, Maréchal Pétain, who is behind the Rwanda genocide, ordered the Greenpeace Rainbow Warrior bombing, and one scandal after the other during François Mitterrand's presidency. The Freemason Mitterrand built the Paris Pyramid of Le Louvre, and Giscard d'Estaing was a Knight of Malta. Robert Boulin stayed a Freemason for only two years before leaving the club, which is of course a very dangerous and possibly lethal thing to do. Uh, so here you can read about uh, uh, Marshal Pétain and uh, François Mitterrand during the, uh, the Second World War, about the some of the scandals. So here's some more about the genocide of uh, Rwanda, the bombing of the Rainbow Warrior. Well, it's, it's killing, it's murder, genocide uh, without end by this. Nazi in a uh, socialist uh, disguise. Well, here's some more about Mitterrand. He uh, helped the Nazis in the New York Times. And this is one of the many reasons uh, Robert Boulin he had to die. Because they wanted this man in place. So here you can read some more in Wikipedia about Mitterrand and his uh, Nazi habits. So, a good man like uh, Robert uh, Boulin, he had to die. So, he didn't become president. He would have become the president, or at least the prime minister of France. So, this animal here could get, become the, uh, the ruler of France. That's why Robert Boulin, one of the reasons he had to die. 
So here's some interesting information about Chateau de Rambouillet, where they um, in the in the Rambouillet forest, just next to it, where they murdered uh, Robert Boula. So um, you, uh, very interesting information to read, and it's all connected to the murder, of course. It's the aristocracy, the New World Order, and the Old World Order. Well, that's what it's all about. So you can't understand this murder if you don't look at the history. And you have to look like a thousand years back and watch my videos. So here you can read uh, in Wikipedia about uh, Giscard d'Estaing, that he's a descendant of uh, Louis XV of France and of Charlemagne. From, from even his wife is, is from a princess, everything, well, it's all here. Well, all these politicians, so all pharaohs, they're all aristocrats, they never left. Just watch my film, Fair Aristocracy, and you understand. Well, you see, even David Icke, he has a coat of arms, and it says here, Icke, early origins, the variations of the surname Icke include Hicks, Hickers, Hick, Hicks, Hicks. Well, wasn't that Bill Hicks and supposedly Alex Jones? So they all are. You know, that's why they never have any problems. Well, I have problems, but these guys never have any problems. You know, just as Lenin said, you know, the best way to control the opposition is take control over it. The controlled opposition. It has been worldwide accepted that Switzerland prolonged World War II with two years. Except by the Swiss themselves, of course. Only I say... They prolonged the entire Second World War and the 12 years of Hitler's reign. And here's one of those Swissies helping doing that. And his name was Emile Georg Burle, whose family came right next to the Swiss border from a town called Kappel am Rhein, just a few kilometers away. And he himself was born in 1890 in Pforzheim, Germany, right in the area of the ethnic Swiss as well. And that makes him not a German, but an ethnic Swiss, like the rest of the Nazi gang, like Mengele, Himmler, Julius Streicher, Christian Wert, etc., etc. As I've explained in my other videos on my channel, Gure, like Auschwitz made in Switzerland or the Huns from the Alps, explaining exactly what an ex ethnic Swiss is. So here they are, the, uh, the, the father, Burle, and the son, Burle, selling all those Swiss guns to wannabe dictators, like this one here, looks like Haile Selassie. This one here, probably looking at the barrel of the gun. And here, and here, you know, guns for dictators, you know. And in the same years of the early 20s, when Hitler and um, Rudolf Hess were in Zurich, also Mr. Emil Burle went to Zurich, Switzerland, and bought the entire Erlikon gun factories, later on supplying the Nazi war industry with shells, grenades and cannons by the Swiss industrial complex. See my video on that? See my video on the Swiss industrial complex? through which World War II was helped to be prolonged by two years, and the most terrible years of the entire world war that was. Later on, Burle, the ethnic Swiss war criminal, became well known for his looted Nazi art collection, with stolen paintings by the Nazis, who just murdered the rightful owners, so the looted art could be transported, to the motherland in the Alps. And he never had any problems with the Swiss authorities because of that, who totally agree with any good business transaction for the motherland of all evil in the Alps. Unless you criticize them like I did, then they even have special Swiss laws to put anyone in prison who criticizes Switzerland. I'll show you that later. How come all these octagon Nazis can possibly combine artworks and classical music, being the fine art of the human race, together with war, destruction and children being torn to pieces? And they were all like that. 
Hitler, Goering, Heydrich, and the most terrible sadist camp commandants. Well, this is the typical Swiss schizophrenic pathology portraying a clean Switzerland on the one hand, while hiding the worst from us, with all the terrible things going on up in the Alps, conspiring against humanity through the octagon. So here is his son, Dieter Buala, who continued, continued the international gun deals of the Swiss industrial military complex with all sorts of dictatorships and finally with South Africa for which he got sentenced to prison which the Swiss later on changed into a fine of 20,000 Swiss francs. The exact same amount to which I was sentenced for speaking out on YouTube in my historical documentaries and had to go to prison for that where they tortured me for not doing anything wrong. And here you can see Erlikon, Burle Erlikon, the Swiss military industrial complex. So, rich Swiss criminal octagon Nazi arms dealers get the same 20,000 Swiss francs fine and don't go to prison. And innocent YouTubers serve years in Swiss torture detention facilities for not doing anything wrong at all. That's Octagon Switzerland with different laws for different people and not everyone being equal. Burle Erlikon also owns the Pilatus poor man's bomber for local genocides. See my vid here about that. Believe me, Octagon Switzerland is the base of all evil from which wars and mass slaughter are brought upon mankind. And this one here, Emil Burle, and later on his son, his son Dieter, uh, was another ethnic Swiss working for the Nazis and prolonging World War II with two years for Octagon to get Octagon rich and powerful. Another ethnic Swiss to be put on the list. Yeah, well here another article about the uh, Burle. I put in the links for you. A Swiss merchant of death's Nazi friends and suspicious masterpieces. A famous manufacturer of anti-aircraft guns collected hundreds of paintings in Nazi-occupied Paris with some help from Hermann de Goering. Now, what happens to them? Well, nothing. You know, they all get they all get protected in Switzerland. And here it says, the richest man in Switzerland. Yeah. The richest man in Switzerland. Um, this is Octogon. Putting in the links for you. So this is from the Independent. Dieter Burle, controversial arms dealer. And I'll show it to you where it says 20,000. You had to pay 20,000 Swiss francs yeah, to get out of prison. I mean, they didn't even sentence me to a prison sentence. They can't, you know, so they sentenced me also to 20,000. But then the other way around, they, um, I had to go to prison for one year and two months. They, they, they ruined my wife financially, they ruined us. We're already living under the minimum, existence minimum, you know. This is Switzerland. Highly criminal. So here's the Wikipedia. Um, he was born of uh, Emil Georg Bühler. He was born in Pforzheim, which is here in the south of Germany. This is Alemannic and they are ethnic Swiss, as I explained in my other videos. It's almost in Switzerland. And uh, his family came from here, Kappel am Rhein, which is, which is almost in Switzerland, even more south. Where you can see the red dot. I put the link in the uh, description for you. Yeah, the Burle Hermann Göring collect, art collection in Switzerland, in Zurich, and they never have any problems with the authorities. Yeah, moreover, Switzerland received the looted assets of concentration camp victims and in return gave Germany hard currency to buy war material from other countries. These dealings enabled the Germans to prolong the war for two years. 
and also the Burla Erlikon um, gun deals. Uh, they prolonged prolong the war, but actually Switzerland financed and organized the entire war. They prolonged the entire Second World War, if you know what I mean. So it says, under Swiss law, citizens, citizens may ask the federal prosecutor for a criminal indictment for acts against the country. You know, that's what I did, act against the country. You go to prison, you know. So this was in the New York Times. It's a highly corrupt criminal country. And they are behind it all. Switzerland is the base of all evil. They did it. It has been worldwide accepted that Switzerland prolonged World War II with two years. Except by the Swiss themselves, of course. Only I say they prolonged the entire Second World War and the 12 years of Hitler's reign. For almost 30 years, the Swiss Octogon of the Nazi Templars from Switzerland were the head of the notorious East German Stasi, or das Ministerium für Staatssicherheit, the Ministry of State Security. And his name was Erich Honecker, who also was an ethnic Swiss together with Himmler, Dr. Mengele and the rest of the gang. Therefore, this Swissy, too, has terrorized the German people, just as the rest of the Swiss gang did. Erich Honecker was a real Swiss dictator, holding all three main offices of the GDR or DDR in German. He was, one, the General Secretary of the Central Committee of the Socialist Party of East Germany, two, Chairman of the State Council of the German Democratic Republic and three, Chairman of the National Defense Council of East Germany. So from 1971 till 1989 he was the President, head of all the armed forces, including the Stasi and head of the one and only party of East Germany and the communist state religion called Socialism as well. No wonder the Swiss Mebo Bomb Timer Company, who ordered the Lockerbie bombing, sold terrorist hardware to the Swiss made Stasi. Therefore, the Swiss Stasi financing and uh, training and organizing the PLO, the Palestinian Liberation Organization, thus executing Octagon's Albert Pike's Islamo fascist agenda of a third world war against Islam and designed by Octagon of the Nazi Templars from the Alps. Swiss has always been terrorizing the Germans by financing Hitler and the Nazis with all ethnic Swiss or Nazi key positions, training the RAF, Rote Armee Fraktion Bader Meinhof, by the Swiss Stasi, and having murdered 20 million Germans during the 30-year war from 1618 to 1648, Swiss mercenaries killing two-thirds of the German population and their children and then massively replacing them with ethnic Swiss. So this is a real picture from the 30-year war, a drawing. And in... Uh, this German book about the Swiss Palatines or Schweizer Saarland, it even proves what I've been telling you so many years, that the south of Germany is 100% ethnic Swiss territory, who settled down in southern Germany, Alsace, Vorarlberg and northern Italy after the 30-year war from 1618 to 1648, when Swiss mercenaries had murdered all the original German inhabitants. And so came the ancestors of the dictator from East Germany, from Switzerland, to the Palatines. The same route Obama's ancestors took before coming to the US. And is always going for the key positions. And Swissy Erich Honegger, 
was born in 1912 Neunkirchen on August 25th in the Swiss Palatines or Schweizer Saarland. Here it says in German, Erich Honecker, chief of Eastern Germany, his ancestors came from Switzerland, also the strain of the Honecker family, out of which later on the notorious offspring Erich came forth, who for many years shaped the face of the German Democratic Republic. It has been proven he came out of Switzerland. In the 17th centuries, century, two brothers of the Honecker family, well, still written the Alpine way, as in Arnold Schwarzenegger, with two G's, from Leenhof Goldbach Ruti, canton of Zurich, emigrated to the Palatines or Saarland, just as in Obama's case. So here's some more, uh, for those who speak German, here it says Neunkirchen, and here the source where you can find even more. And here it says in German, epilogue, Alpine blood flows through the veins of the Palatines or Saarland in Germany. In the end, we made an important discovery. It shows that the Palatine and Swiss history are closely related. And here may be lies the source of the factual description. Palatine Switzerland or in German Saarländische Schweiz. It was during the Thirty Year War from 1618 to 1648 that entirely destroyed the Palatines, leaving a dry and eroded landscape. Only 20% of the local population was still alive, but starving to death. Well, they actually all died, in fact, murdered by Swissy, which is octagon speciality. And further on, it says that the aristocracy, well, who else than Pharaoh himself, the Count of the Palatines of Nassau Saarbrücken of the Holy Roman Empire invited Pharaoh's Swissies to come and replace all the murdered Germans. And here's some more for those who speak German. It says uh, that the, the, the Swiss blood, the Alpine blood, it's still flowing in the veins of the, uh, of the Palatines. Hey, eh, Mr. Obama? There's even the Irish Palatines, English Palatines and American Palatines of the Obama branch, because Swissy didn't just stop in southern Germany, but they had much bigger plans, plans like ruling over the USA, which is the case today. Yeah, it says Defoe, like this. American actor, here you Swiss, you know, like uh, Daniel Daniel Defoe, I think his name is, and uh, like uh, René Zellweger, also of Switzerland. Hollywood probably is pharaonic Swiss of the Nazi Templars, you know, indoctrinating the American youth. It's so good, you know, to go into the army. You know, otherwise, they wouldn't have any more. They wouldn't have any more soldiers, you know, to go to Iraq and get killed over there, because. Who would actually want to do that, you know, if you really think normal? Naturally, it was the Duke of Saarland, of Pharaoh's aristocracy, who invited their Swissies into the Palatines. Because Swissy already had so much Pharaonic DNA through aristocracy's prime noctis. Believe me, Swissy is everywhere and rules the world through all key positions. This is Octogon from the Alps of the Swiss Nazi Templars. Oh, and by the way, Hitler's Eva Braun had a Scottish terrier also called Stasi, state security, as it was always barking, seemingly defend, defending Mr. and Mrs. Hitler, as if it were the Stasi, Staatssicherheit, state security, protecting the dictator and its Swiss-financed agent of Octogon. Charming family pictures, ain't it now? If only 
the dog weren't called state security. This video is about the Lockerbie bombing on Solstice 1988 and how, why and by whom it was ordered from out of Switzerland and by the same organization that financed Adolf Hitler and the Nazis. The financing and organizing of the Islamofascism by the Nazi Templars from Octagon, Switzerland, who basically won the Second World War and Octagon's great eminences like Swiss, François Genou, a personal friend of Adolf Hitler, connecting the dots. Which led to 270 dead in Lockerbie, Scotland, ordered by the Swiss Octagon who provided logistics and the timer of the bomb by the Swiss Mebo company from Zurich, Switzerland. So here you can see some parts of the Swiss timer by Mebo that uh, survived the, uh, the Lockerbie bombing. You all see the Templars V here in the, uh, in the logo of the Mebo Limited. Here it says Libya. Um, I managed to infiltrate the Octagon being there when 20 years later Octagon members discussed the Swiss Lockerbie bombing and I could give you names of important members who were present that day, members of the industrial elite owning factories in Octagon, Switzerland and steering world events. But I need protection for me and my family, a safe place to live under a new identity. I couldn't believe my ears when I heard those grown-up influential men say how Lockerbie was a solstice sacrifice on December 21st. And present to the Führer and Octagon because of the 88 in 1988 standing for Heil Hitler and also for Octagon of course. As the H is the um, the eighth letter in the alphabet. How could these sincere-looking Swiss talk such an occult rubbish over the death of uh, 270 lives? So here you can see the logo again of the Mebo Limited Telecommunications. Of course, here it's octagonal, octagon. And here's the V of the Templars. I mean, it's there. They believe in it, you know. It's, it's hidden. Now that I know the extent of evil in Switzerland and the other realm in which Swissy believes, I understand how these wealthy men had achieved, achieved all in life, materially and financially, and had not satisfied their hunger for more yet or had they gotten that far starting off with the occult as a backup in the first place this was exactly the same type of nazi occult heinrich himmler hermann goering julius streicher and the entire nazi gang used to talk about as i wasn't really invited unfortunately I couldn't pick up the entire conversation, but enough to make you shiver and have your blood freeze in your veins. You will not fully understand this video and the Lockerbie bombing if you haven't seen my previous films with the proofs of Switzerland behind World War II. So, so let's get to some facts. So this is the Wikipedia page about, here it says Lockerbie, the Penham Flight 103. And it has been discovered that the time of the Lockerbie bomb was Swiss made by a Zurich based company called Mebo for Meister and Bollier. Meister for M E and Bollier for B O in Mebo. And uh, if you go here to the chapter, well, it's all interest, interesting. Civil inv investigation here, click on it. Uh, here, civil in investigation and um, here it is 
It is. The timer was allegedly traced uh, through its Swiss manufacturer, Mebo, to the Libyan military and Mebo employee. And the Mebo's owner, Edwin Bollier, so he testified at the trial, that it was Swiss made. You know, and they always got their dirty little fingers in it. So here he is, Edwin Bollier, one of the founders, and here the Pan Am Flight 103 bombing, and here's Erwin Meister, the other one, you know, the Lockerbie bombing, you can read it, uh, well they were in it. And here's the possibility of co-conspirator charge, well, that's interesting how they, you know, so it says, uh, during Bollier's testimony, it was revealed that the prosecutor had been considering charging him with the same conspiracy to murder. So they didn't. They always let the Swiss get away with it. You know, it's not appropriate to libel him as a co-conspirator. Well, they are the main ones behind it, you know. And so here it even goes all the way to uh, Pretoria in South Africa. Uh, as Switzerland was comp was entirely in that as well, um, backing up the apartheid and, and with the uh, this the Swiss chemical industry with uh, Doctor Basson, uh, Doctor Death. I made a video about it. Uh, it goes very deep, and it's all Swiss, and they always get away with it. You know? Yeah, Swiss. He always has the dirty little fingers in it somehow. And if not for Switzerland and the Swiss precision timer device for bombs, there wouldn't have been any Lockerbie tragedy. So I already did a film about it. So here's François Junot. You really have to see the film, like Auschwitz made in Switzerland. Um, François Junot was a noted Swiss financier and a principal benefactor of the Nazi diaspora through the Odessa network in support of Middle Eastern terror groups during the post-World War II, 20th century. He was considered the Swiss financier of the Third Reich. He even was a personal friend of Mr. Adolf Hitler and the Algerian liberation from Palestine, Arab liberation. Well, go and have a look at it yourself. Um, these are the men, the great eminences of Octagon, uh, connecting the dots between Swiss Nazism and the uh, Arab terrorist attacks, like the one in Lockerbie. Very dangerous people. And there was another one. I even he threatened me once. There was. Uh, I'm going to show him. I'm going to show him here. So here's the other one. Um, Islamist. And they founded the uh, um, Al-Taqwa Bank. They're all Nazis, Islamists. You know, here it says the Al-Taqwa Bank in Switzerland. His name was um, Ahmed Huber al Swissri. Uh, Swiss. Yeah, François Gino. That was his friend. And there are more of them. I can give you the names, as I told you before. But I need, I need security for my family and me. And these guys are always protected by the Swiss Nazi police, they're 100% in it. And the Swiss Nazi judiciary system, they're all in it. And then after the, um, the Lockerbie bombing, this, uh, they tried to, um, to blame it all on the Iran Air Flight 655. It was shot down the same year, 1988, in July, just before, a couple of months before. And uh, so to spark the um, the um, the war against Islam, you know, by Octagon and by um, um, these Swiss guys and the guy behind uh, Phileas Walder, the guy behind um, uh, Albert Pike and his idea of a third world war. This is what's happening, and they never get; they always get away with it. But it goes deeper still. This is the worldwide Swiss industrial military complex, of which I've already done a film on, 
on my other channel, Gure, which you can see here. You must see it, otherwise you won't understand the Lockerbie bombing. By the way, the ignition system, the ignition devices of the German U-boat torpedoes of World War II were also Swiss made, to which I lost my grandfather, who was an officer in the Royal Navy and was torpedoed in 1942. And just as the Templars had an enormous fleet, the Swiss Mebo company selling bomb timers to Islamic terrorists also had a fleet. So could you imagine that so-called neutral, peaceful country, you know, in the Alps, with no oceans or no seas attached to it, having an enormous fleet? They do, actually. I already showed that in my videos. Well, that's because of the Templars, because the country was founded by the Templars, who brought the Templars' treasures to, to Switzerland, with which they founded the Swiss banks. So here it says, Mebo bought two vessels off the coast of, um, of Holland, uh, Radio North Sea. <laughs> yeah, timers for Libya, timers for East Germany, criminal complaint, false testimony, a Lockerbie trial, etc., etc. Yeah. The Swiss businessman Erwin Meister and Edwin Bolli. Yeah, it's about the Lockerbie trial. And Bollier said, I was present when two such timers were included in bomb cylinders. And <laughs> they never got punished for it, you know. <laughs> They're so deep into it. Yeah, the timers for East Germany, etc., etc. It's also interesting to see that the Lockerbie Court was in the Netherlands. The, uh, the thing with the Radio North Sea. Uh, and that even goes deeper, I'm going to show that in a minute. It was also in the Netherlands, so uh, they probably completely bought the court. We were all, you know, Switzerlanders of the Templars, and out of the Templars came the Freemasons, well, you know, the judges, and what else should I say? Well, here's Swissy again, a Swiss engineer Edwin Bollier and Erwin Meister of the, uh, the Mebo. Yeah, Mebo Company, and this is 20 years before the uh, before the Lockerbie bombing. And they owned at least two ships called the Mebo 1 and the Mebo 2. That were the Swiss-owned pirate radio ships, you know, like the Templar ships, the pirates, of the Swiss-owned Radio North Sea International off the coast of Holland in international waters in the wild 60s and 70s where the Swiss Mebo broadcasts have sent even encrypted messages to international terrorists and Swissy finally even bombed their own ship in 1971, most likely by accident while preparing a Swiss-made bomb with a Swiss-made Lockerbie timer for somebody else. Now here it says, the 19... Uh, 71 bombing they even <laughs> bombed their own ship here it is you know wild things going on in these days yeah the 1971 uh, bombing uh, well it's all here you can read it yourself there was even a bomb in here in their own ship So what most people don't know that Swiss Mebo here has been more than once been involved in bombings. Well, they didn't discuss that in the uh, in the court hearings uh, after the Lockerbie bombing, did they? Now, and at least two times too many bombings to be just wiped away in the Lockerbie bombing as a minor role. This is also why there have never been any terrorist attacks against Switzerland. Because they are fed by Switzerland through Octagon's great eminences like Swiss François Genoux and Ahmed Huber al Swissri, who linked Nazism to Islamic terrorism, founding the Swiss Al Taqwa Bank with an Arab name, and Phileas Walder, the real power behind Albert Pike in his goal of World War III between Islam and Christianity. So here you can read it, how Radio Norsi International, by the Swiss, and all those great eminences of Octagon behind it, they were sending out encrypted messages uh, by, uh, for and by the terrorists. Even, even the IRA, you can read it here. And Gaddafi, 
uh, all these things going on. And nobody thought about Swissy behind it, you know. Yeah, under the voice of peace, you know, like Switzerland, it's clean, it's neutral, they never did anything. So that was in the 60s and 70s, you know, the voice of peace and yeah, sending out uh, encoded messages, you know, to, to uh, with Swiss timers and to um, to do some bombing campaign somewhere. That was what, what, what it was all about. And Swiss, you always get away with it. So, uh, maybe somebody should sue him. The, the, the relatives of the people, you know, who, uh, who died in the Lockerbie bombing, go and sue Switzerland. They're, they're the ones behind it. 100% sure. Watch all my movies. Take you a few days and you'll see. It says, it's well known that Gaddafi was funding and supplying bombs and arms to the IRA, who were very active in the 1970s throughout Britain, setting bombs and killing innocent people with Swiss timers, of course. The true purpose of the establishment of Radio Norsi International has often been hinted at, but never confirmed. There are numerous rumors about how it was sending out coded messages to foreign agents via its transmitters, using shortwave, etc uh, etc et uh, then at the end uh, of the ships um, they were delivered to Libya the two ships the Swiss ships the Templar ships after a while of mucking around with them as radio ships they were eventually blown up as part of the Libyan Navy target practice <laughs> so here again on Wikipedia about the Radio North Sea so the Mebo 2 was renamed El Fatah <laughs> and the other one, uh, well they all got Arab names and uh, yeah, that's, well, it was called Angela, the angel. Hmm, what kind of angel do they mean now, eh? So these Swiss ships, you know, uh, in, in the North Sea between England and the Netherlands, uh, it's, you see the connection here? What's going on? The Mebo company from Switzerland even sold timers to the East German uh, Stasi or Staatssicherheit. And we know now that Arab and German left-wing terrorists like the RAF and Bader Meinhof were trained and supplied by the Stasis on orders of the Swiss Octagon using Swiss timer devices by Mebo. Of course, all these young left-wing so-called terrorists were misled and indoctrinated by Octagon behind the screens for the purpose of Switzerland's global chess game and their banks and their Templars. So this is a, um, this is a great film worth seeing made by the Germans a couple of years ago, the Bader Meinhof complex. I think it's about two hours long. It's, it's very well done. Uh, so go and have a look at it if you can find it. And uh, anyone seeking judicial help from the Swiss state will just lose his time because the Swiss police is entirely corrupt and Nazi minded, defending the interest of the motherland octagon only at all cost, usually stalling time because Switzerland are a bunch of organized criminals with the country. Yes, the Arabs did it, but the Swiss masterminded Lockerbie, the proofs are, are all there, <laughs> yet nobody talks about it. Marcus Cicero once said, a nation can survive its fools and even the ambitious, but it cannot survive treason from within. An enemy at the gates is less formidable, for he is known and carries his banner openly, but the traitor moves amongst those within the gates freely, his sly whispers rustling through all the alleys, heard in very halls of government itself. So we all know there is an enemy within, who destroys our nature and gives us endless wars. And many people say, believe and repeat each other, it's the Zionists who are in charge. But then, how come 
ultra-Zionist parties like Kah and Kahane Hai are being labeled as dangerous terrorist organizations by Europe's EU, Canada, the US, and even in Israel. Here you can see them, Kahana Hai and Kah. I don't know if I pronounce it right. I don't know how to pronounce it. So this is the um, US Department of State, the foreign terrorist organization list with two Israeli terrorist movements in it. So if Zionists rule the world, why would they do this? So why would the Zionists forbid their own Zionist organizations if they are supposedly ruling the world? <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense, people. So here they are again, uh, Kahane, Hai and Kah, together with the Hamas, the Hezbollah and the Al-Qaeda, together with all the other terrorists. So, you know, so it doesn't make any sense. Must be somebody else ruling, eh? If the ruling class, an enemy within, forbids Zionist organizations, well, then logically some other force is in control. Anyway, Zionism practically died on November 5, 1990, when their charismatic leader, Rabbi Meir Kahane, got assassinated in 1990 who was probably the biggest Jewish leader from the last hundred years. And there was hardly any news coverage of it in the world's media. As if the media even hated the memory of this charismatic ultra-Zionist leader. As if the media wanted his remembrance killed as well. Now, why would this presumably Zionist media not extensively boost the murder of their own Zionist leader? And why would that so-called Zionist rule have an ultra-Zionist killed without giving him the protection worthy a president? So, 1990 in New York, Kahane, the biggest Zionist leader of all times, got shot with a 357 in the neck and having no protection at all. Wow, that doesn't sound like some worldwide Zionist domination to me, but more like some unprofessional attempt of a people that cannot get organized the way they would prefer. There were three Arabs of a hit team who did the hit, an Egyptian who did the shooting, and as he said later, having a Palestinian and a Jordanian to assist him. And even these Arabs were far better organized than these so-called Zionists, of whom every, everyone repeats being the rulers of the world. Now, let's have a look of the uh, chronological order of the event and of those events around. Only two years before the Arab hit team assassinated the charismatic ultra-Zionist leader in New York, Switzerland founded the Al-Taqwa Bank to finance these sort of actions. Because a hit team needs a place to sleep, food, flight tickets, taxi, transport, guns, etc. And that all costs money. So in order for a hit team to concentrate on their target, usually others take care of logistics and money. And therefore, Switzerland founded the al Taqwa Bank with a non-Swiss sounding name. al Taqwa is Arabic and means piety for God in the sense of fearing Allah, which name has in fact absolutely nothing to do with Switzerland. But it also has another meaning in Arabic, which Swissy carefully chose, to put a thing between oneself and another, to preserve or guard oneself. which is exactly the thing Swissy always does, by using others as a tool and to stay oneself behind the screens 
thus protecting the motherland and base of all evil. So here you can see how far the tentacles of the Swiss conglomerate actually stretch out and how sly Swiss's octagon really works. Just as before in history, they had another Swiss bank for the Nazis, which they called die Bank für internationalen Zahlungsausgleich, or the BIS in English, with which Swiss transferred the theft of the American savings after the Wall Street crash of 1929 to finance the German war industry over a Swiss bank. See my other films on my channel Gure for that. If not, you will not understand that Switzerland of the Nazi Templars rules the world of Pharaoh and not some dumb Zionists who couldn't even protect their greatest Zionist leader of all times, Rabbi Meir Kahane. Further proof of those Swiss behind the murder of Kahane are the Swiss great eminences of Octagon François Genoux and Huber al Swissri, creating the Islam of fascism by infecting Islam with the ideas of Nazism made in Switzerland that survived World War II. More proofs can be found in that continuity of the Swiss to eradicate the Jews from the planet by financing Hitler and all big Nazi responsibles being either Swiss or ethnic Swiss. Watch my videos Auschwitz made in Switzerland or the Huns from the Alps on my other channel Gure for all the proofs. And that the Nazi Templars who founded Switzerland in 1291 already perpetrated an enormous bloodbath on the inhabitants of Jerusalem in 1099. So you can see the Swiss Red Cross here, and here again, and here again. That Swissy did it, you know? They always did it. And that this Swiss continuity of their octagon Nazi Templar agenda brings to the light who ordered the hit on the last real Zionist leader, Kahane probably killing Zionism as a political force for good in 1990. And interesting enough that 1099 of the Jerusalem massacre has the same numbers as 1990, death of a Zionist leader. The same gematria, 1099 or 1990. Thus, leaving the inhabitants of Israel being ruled by the Masons and Europe's aristocracy, just like the rest of the world, and who both are in fact the true descendants of Pharaoh. It's the same system all over the world, and Pharaoh rules out of their base Octagon in the Alps. whose orders are executed by the Nazi Templars from Switzerland, assigned to defend and protect the motherland in the Alps with their caves of Ali Baba and Al Taqwa by the Swiss Nazi Templars and their Swiss guard of Octagon. The Swiss Nazi Templars of Octagon had and still have an enormous fleet of ships that brought the Crusaders to the Middle East and to Jerusalem. The Templars' treasure went to Switzerland, but their fleet was hidden in the north of Britain, obtaining the right to stay in Scotland, also called the Scottish Rite, where the Rite, with R-I-G-H-T, became a Rite, R-I-T-E, and accepted law. It is therefore no surprise that later on in history, with a new fleet of slave ships, the black slave trade to the Americas was entirely in Switzerland's hands by the Swiss Nazi Templars and their banks. Of which I will give you now names of Swiss families, Swiss banks and Swiss companies. Here you can see the Swiss flag at the end of the ship. There it is again, the Swiss flag at the end of the ship zoomed in. 
Uh, it says in the article, Switzerland played key role in the slave trade. So this is from 2003. Switzerland's involvement in the African slave trade runs deeper than the history books suggest. Being a landlocked country did not stop Switzerland from playing its part in the trans transatlantic slave trade triangle, linking West, the well, linking West Africa, America, and Europe between the 16th and 19th century. Swiss banks, for example, owned as much as a third of the Com Compagnie des Andes, a French company that held a, a monopoly over the West African slave trade. Well, they they ran, I tell you. The Swiss Templar, Nazi Templars, they ran the entire African sl slave trade. This is just the, uh, the tip of the iceberg. Swiss involvement in slavery and the transatlantic slave trade. A merely cursory look at various works and studies into the social and economic history of Switzerland as well as a rereading of older standard publications, lead to the surprising discovery that the Swiss involvement in slavery and the triangular trade has been much closer than previously known. The Baal-based trading company Burkhardt financed commercial enterprises for slave trading in Nantes and in 1790 via its affiliated company Burkhardt et Fils. You see, they it's, a, it's Burkhardt, and they wrote it down in a French name, Burkhardt, you know, they're always hiding things. Contributed to the equipment of a slave ship in which enterprise Christophe Merian took part too. It's a very rich family in Basel. And we find here the word Mer, Mer i An. Mer, it means a pyramid in the Pharaonic language. Ri is the sun, Mer Ri. An and on is often used in pharaonic names. I translated it once. Jens E. van Berkem, a company from the canton of Vaud, was engaged in the equipment of slave ships, Pays de Vaud and City of Lausanne. So these are two Swiss slave ships, Pays de Vaud. Vaud is a canton in Switzerland and the city of Lausanne. Lausanne is a, a a big town in Switzerland, both of which were bound for Mozambique to transport slaves across the Atlantic. A, a third vessel, the LVT, you know, Helvetic CH, it means Conf Confederatia Helvetica, that's uh, the name of Switzerland, the Helvetics, it's a confederacy, a, a Helvetic confederacy, that's what it means. Um, later took a similar voyage. Uh, banking firms from Geneva, such as Telusson et Necker, Cotin or Banquet et Malais, Cotin, I think it still exists, as well as the trading firm Pico Fazi, financed and supported the trade with African slaves, above all via the French seaport of Nantes. Being of Geneva's trading and banking families, Bertrand, Perchier, Flournois, Butini, Galatin, Dunant, uh, Henri de Dunant, the guy who invented the Red Cross, made by the Templars, of course. They were the uh, hospitalers. So it's no wonder the, the Dunant family was also in the slave trade. Well, as we know, the Red Cross, they gave a Red Cross passport to the, um, to the German or the, the Swiss Nazis to go to South America. And uh, they are a spy organization. And Fatio owned various plantations. So all these Swiss, they were owning plantations. I told you so about the Ku Klux Klan and Albert Pike and Swiss Phileas Valde. With slaves in the Caribbean also, in Dominica, Grenada, in Suriname which is, I think it's Dutch. For almost a century, members of Baal, that's Basel's, patrician family Fasch, you know, like the word fascist, it is Fasch, from Baal in Basel, owned plantations with Negro slaves in Suriname. Johann Jakob Hoffmann, or the guy who invented the LSD, also in Basel, there, we all find them again. These are Templars families. 
took part in the Curaçao slave trade. Burns Bank, Marcar, and Zurich's bank Loy, they, they still exist, acquired shares of the French comp Compagnie des Andes, a chartered trading company which among other activities held the monopoly of the West African slave trade and of those 31% of the shares were in Swiss hands. Can you imagine? Well, it's just the tip of the iceberg. They were all in Swiss hands. Bernese banker Emmanuel Haller, uh, from Bern, a nice place, I used to live there, was a wholesale colonial trader and Zurich's bank, Rougemont, Hottinger and company invested in overseas trade via the French slaving ports of Lavre, Nantes and Marseille. Members of St. Gall's families Ritzmann, Hugger and Schlumpf, well, that's one of the seven presidents nowadays, Wittmer Schlumpf. You know, they're still there. They never, they never went away. Owned the Suriname plantations L'Alvetia and La Liberté, including their slaves. The Zublin family were the owners of a plantation called Zublin's Lust, <laughs> where they raped all the women, of course, and did dirty things with the children. You know, as I told you, they, you know, the Swiss, the Nazi Templars, or Pharaoh, they make a child with a with a with a with a black person, and the uh, the offspring will be like uh, brown. And if it's if uh, and always raised in a white manner, you know, they take the child away with the slaves. It's quite easy. Then, if if it's a girly child, if she will make another child with a black man, and the offspring will be much blacker. Always raised in a white manner by the Swiss slave owners, the uh, the father never sees his daughter anymore, and after three generations more, the child was black as a um, as a Central African from Congo. But inside, it's what always raised in a Swiss way, and then they put it as a president and some African state and everybody is pleased and say, well, it's a black brother. And this is how they rape Africa again, once more. <laughs> That's what Swissy always did. Now we got a Swiss pre uh, prime minister in, in, uh, in France, uh, Manuel Valls, he's entirely Swiss, a Swiss president in the United States, Obama, etc., well, etc. Et this is where Obama, his ancestors probably, or from the other side probably came from. There were Swiss plantation administrators in Suriname, among them people from the Grison, Konrad, Appenzell, Schlepfer, and Schaffhausen, Vince. In 1763, Colonel Louis Henri Fourgeot, I think Vince that was the, con the, the guy who, the commandant of the, an American concentration camp by the Swiss uh, during the Civil War. Oh, no, his name was Wirt. Uh, Fourgeot from Geneva assisted in suppressing a slave uprising in Berbis. Well, I mean Vince or Wert, <laughs> Swiss anyway. Guyana and other uprisings in Suriname. Captain Wipf, uh, Wipf, Vince, Wert, <laughs> from Schaffhausen was commander of a Swiss battalion. Instrumental in the attempt to re-establish slavery in Haiti. Well, they're everywhere, the Swiss, even in Haiti. In 1652, there was the um, four years after the end of the uh, the Thirty Year War, an important date, and when South Africa was founded by uh, Jan van Riebeek. Isaac Melville, Melville, a citizen of Baal or Basel, at the service of the Swedish African Company, founded a slave castle off the coast of modern Ghana, Cape Coast Castle. Reinhard Iselin from Basel, Switzerland, became financial advisor to the King of Denmark and a great colonial entrepreneur. In the French seaport of Nantes, five Swiss families were engaged in the slave trade. Oh, they're still there. They must, must be in their hundreds of thousands now. There, the Swiss had the monopoly of the production of Indian textiles, an important good in the triangular trade. Some respectable Swiss merchants merchant bankers and the families, above all in textiles and colonial products, 
profited from the transatlantic slave trade through a more or less direct involvement in the triangular trade. The names to be mentioned here are Escher from Zurich, Rita, Winterthur, Zellweger, like the, um, the Swiss um, actress René Zellweger, well, she's of Swiss descent, well, here they are, you know, slave owners, now making money in the Hollywood uh, indoctrinational industries, and Wetter, Außerrhoden, Riedi, Basel, uh, Kunkler, and Zolikova from St. Gall, Amman, Schaffhausen, uh, Schaffhausen, that's also where the uh, um, Jäger, Karl Jäger of the, uh, the Einsatzgruppen, he came from there, and St. Gall, where Hitler's mastermind uh, uh, came from, De Puri, Portalet, Favre, Rossel, Neuchâtel, as well as Labhardt and Gonsenbach, Gonsenbach from Torgau. So they were all Swiss slave merchants. Nice country, eh? I told you so. They had these Swiss Nazi Templars, they still have a very large um, ocean fleet, even today. And of course, during the Nazi times, they were having a very large Nazi fleet, bringing goods for Nazi Germany for their war efforts. It's the same as the Swiss Altakwa Bank, Switzerland's financing of Adolf Hitler, the Swiss Mebo Company and their Radio North Sea Nazi Templar boats, the Swiss Ku Klux Klan, etc., etc. So here you can see a list of the ships of the actual Swiss Navy of Octagon today, bringing Octagon's weapons and other contraband all over the world. The list is so long, I can't get it all on the picture, and it's just the tip of the iceberg of an even bigger hidden amount of Swiss-owned crime ships of that globally operating Swiss crime syndicate. So you can, you can read it. Ocean-going ships under the Swiss flag. It's an enormous list. I put it in the links for you. Just look at it yourself. Switzerland is murder and crime incorporated, and Switzerland always have their dirty little fingers in it. The Swiss Nazi Templars of Octagon are in all key positions in all countries, and they rule the world out of their fortress in the Alps. And of course, also during World War II, this country in the mountains with no adjacent seas, oceans or harbours had an enormous fleet with which the Swiss Nazi Templars could bring raw materials for the German war industry for their Swiss agent, Mr. Hitler, with which the war could go on for a very long time. Believe me. The Templars have always had an enormous fleet from the days of the Crusades for the slave trades during World War II and most certainly today feeding the war in the Middle East. The Nazi Templars have always been doing this and the war would do so much longer as long as Switzerland exists. And no government in the world will ever do something against them, because it's the base of Pharaoh and Octagon in the Alps. So this is today, 2016. The Swiss merchant fleet comprises 47 ships, while well, there are many more, owned and operated by six companies. The Swiss Maritime Navigation Office monitors compliance with all relevant legal treaties, <laughs> and the illegal ones, oversees the administration of the fleet and represents Switzerland in international organizations. The Swiss Merchant Marine Fleet consists of 47 ships with a total capacity of 1 million tons, corresponding to one promille of global tonnage. 
The fleet includes bulk goods freighters, container ships, multi-purpose freighters and tankers for asphalt and other products. These ships operate worldwide as needed. Swiss Atlantic Line. Swiss as in Sir Dizis, Isis, the agents. Well, they've got many agents like Smith the Hitler. Look, they're everywhere. New York, Philadelphia, Baltimore, just like the Swiss banks. They're everywhere. Swiss role at sea makes waves in the new book. The story of the merchant fleet, which helped keep landlocked Switzerland afloat during the Second World War, is told in a fascinating new book about the Swiss Navy. There is a Swiss Navy, a, Temp a Nazi Templar Navy. This was during World War II, bringing raw materials to the Germans, prolonging the Second World War. This is Octagon. And nobody will do anything to stop them. So here you can see a list of Swiss warships or war transport during the war. It says here, Zweiten Weltkrieg. And uh, yeah, they were bringing raw materials and guns and everything to the Germans. Here it says Kriegstransport. That means war transport. Here it says again, war transport, war transport, war transport. Uh, by the Swiss War Transport Office in Bern. Well, it even says in English. And here too, the Swiss War Transport Office in Bern. And they were going, they were on, on the oceans, you know. Honegger and Ascot in London. They're based everywhere, these Templars. And... Uh, you know, all Swiss flags here. Here they hide a, the the red under under the um, under the red cross. You know, but it's the same. The Hospitallers and the Templars. It's one and the same thing. Even in Switzerland, you still got the Hospitallers and the Templars, just like during the Crusades. Nothing has changed. So this was during World War Two, and the list is much longer. It's an enormous list prolonging World War II and our sufferings. This historical documentary with lots of proofs was made by a prisoner of the Swiss. A long time prisoner of the Swiss. Here you can see the first high security prison where they put me in on July 16th, 2015, for making historical YouTube videos. It's in the middle of Switzerland's capital, Bern, next to the railway station on the one side and next to some art museums on the other side, where Swissy exhibits looted Nazi art collections from the Burle gun dealers. While the tourists passing by admiring Switzerland and how clean, wealthy and beautiful it all is, while passing the most terrible torture detention center with oxygen deprivation techniques applied. When walking from the railway station to the looted art museum. So here's the railway station. You can see here the, uh, the tracks. Here it says Bahnhof Bern. And here's the tourist information. So there you go, walking here, past the Burger King here. And you're heading for the art museum here with the looted Nazi art collections of Mr. Burla. See my previous film. So you're walking here. And here's the detention torture facility of Bern. Completely airtight. It's here, the whole thing here. And nobody hears a thing. And as all windows are airtight closed, not even a smothered sigh of a tormented soul will find its way out to the happy tourists, who will hardly be informed about this at the tourist information, that political prisoners get slowly tortured to death on the way to the Swiss looted art collection. 
It says oxygen deprivation. Hypoxia is a deficiency of oxygen, which causes cell injury by reducing aerobic oxidative respiration. Hypoxia is an extremely important and common cause of cell injury and cell death. Not even the Islamic State guys and girls are as mean and cruel as Swissy. And I don't think that a devout Muslim tortures any people at all. Because he or she would go to hell for that. Being the only thing a devout Muslim fears. They're all crisis actors while showing the real monsters as clean and neutral. Now so hell Swissy, I'll call you and your criminal little fascist paradise the Swiss Lamic State. The Swiss Lamic State of Octagon. The SS of Octagon for Swiss Lamic S and State S. And SS means ISIS, as in Pharaonic Demotic. Only the consonants are being written. So here you can read in the Google translation how innocent human beings and political prisoners get slowly suicided there in Bern. And this article appeared in the newspaper just a couple of weeks before they put me in there. They probably wanted to do me before they were going to change something. This is the airtight dimmed glass of my cell in that very same prison. I had to look at for months, feeling like an insect in a glass jar with insufficient oxygen, day and night, making you wake up in the middle of the night, not being able to breathe properly. And of course, in case of any anti-torture control, if there is any at all, the cell will be shown with the door open for just a few minutes, while the code O2T oxygen deprivation really starts working after a few hours with the door closed, when slowly the cells running out of air getting thick and saturated for most of your time in solitary confinement in there. So this is the other prison in Burgdorf where they put me in afterwards. They put me together with all sorts of psychopaths, child molesters, schizophrenics, crazy people, maniacs and sick drug addicts next to whom you don't even want to breathe the air or at least what was left of the air and already inhaled a dozen times by them. Then they transported me, the YouTuber political prisoner to the most modern, also airtight, high-security prison of Octagon, Switzerland, in Burgdorf. Where the Duke Hartwig von Hund Radowski, Hitler's racist model writer, was from. Where the corrupt cop had lied things together and where all the indictments for speaking out on YouTube came from. Feeling nicely at home, so to speak, in Switzerland's heart of Nazism. And without sufficient oxygen for the organism and your brain capacities, seeing people get crazy and depressive. So here you can see that the Nazis got the idea from Switzerland. In the concentration camps they did experiments on oxygen deprivation. And it's still going on today in Switzerland, on innocent people. Can you believe that? Here I could walk in circles, almost always alone, early in the morning, between the cold concrete and icy barbed wire, feeling as on death row, with the slow death gradually breathing in one's neck, transpiring throughout the entire concrete atmosphere. Just for telling the truth on YouTube. I'm not sure if it shows you can see all the since prison I've got all these veins you know popped uh, I, I never had this before somebody told me it might be of uh, because of scalar waves does anybody know more about it I mean a very very bad health you can't imagine so I do the other eye now there's the other eye I open it up I don't know if it can f if it focuses all right. Yeah. 
You see all the veins popped. Well, I'm not dead yet, and they did bad things, eh? When my wife, with the help of some friends, paid the rest of the ransom of my kidnapping and got me out of that Swiss torture detention facility on November the 1st, 2015, I decided not to make any more videos. But since the Swiss state thugs arrested us again on December 21st, 2015 and solstice again, just like the Swiss Lockerbie sacrifice, I should maybe tell you the rest I know about them. But I need your help for that and someone offering me a place to stay for which you can contact me on my new email. Tell my wife and children that I love them and miss them. Yes, Manuel, I read the message on your channel. Thanks for everything, bro. Hi everyone, it's been almost half a year now and I feel like a human wreck now. After what they did to me in the meantime. I was arrested and tortured in a high security prison because of my videos revealing the true nature of Octagon Switzerland of the Nazi Templars. On July 16, 2015, they arrested me in front of my children on a bridge next to a shopping mall. My four-year-old daughter crying, my 13-year-old son shocked. Cops holding my arms and standing everywhere, with cars and everywhere. Then they took me to several high security prisons, keeping me in solitary confinement, most of the time in a cell with no window to open, with saturated used up air, not enough oxygen to nourish the organism, keeping me as an insect in a glass marmalade jar with a lid on it. Dry, used air, drying out the lungs, drying out your brain into the worst burnout you can imagine. After a few days in that jar, I felt like a punch in my stomach around the solar plexus area, like something getting in and taking over. Since that moment, experiencing suggestions not from me and MKUltra like, no idea how they did it, leaving my true witness account of this evil dictatorship in the Alps that brought so much sorrow to humanity and still. As the Swiss Octogon is behind the fan financing of Islamist attacks, just as the Swiss Nazi Templars financed Mr. Hitler and his gang, and if they did it once, you know, they're always going to do it. They did it with Mr. Hitler, and they're still going on. And every time when there's an Islamic attack, like in France, two weeks later there are the elections, and they want the right-wingers to come through. So, uh, who's taking advantage, or trying to take advantage of the Islamic uh, attacks? Well, it's the right-wing, it's Switzerland who wants to destroy the European community. It's Octagon, believe me. And it already started with this guy, François Genoux, the great eminence of uh, Octagon, who was a personal friend of Mr. Hitler. Well, I already showed that to you. And as by law, they cannot sentence anyone to a prison sentence for making videos. So, they sentenced me to pay a fine of 20,000 Swiss francs, perfectly knowing I cannot pay that, and being the equivalent for one year and two months in a high security torture facility for political prisoners. So here you can read some of the official documents, you know, and why they put me in prison, because I talked, uh, yeah, because of my videos. Yeah. And I'll just lie a lot of things together for which I don't even have any proofs. And they wanted to keep me until August 29th, 2016. And here it says uh, 9,000 Swiss francs and 11,000, so that makes 20,000 Swiss francs. And why did, they, why did they arrest me in the first place? Well, that says because of YouTube. That's my videos here everywhere. Video, uh, YouTube, well they don't like my videos. So they put you in prison, a high security prison, you know, for uh, 
I just lie some things together. Now it says our YouTube Down here. It said that I, I didn't behave well and that I, I, I was swearing and and, and, and I wasn't I wasn't telling the truth. Well, you saw I was telling the truth in my videos. You know, it says you know, YouTube there, YouTube. It's all about YouTube. The Swiss are very much afraid of YouTube, apparently, so because of my videos. That's why in Switzerland, you know, you get tortured and they, they put you in a high security prison in solitary confinement because you make YouTube videos and you're gone, you know. They're absolutely afraid of YouTube. Yeah, it says, Gure, my channel, Chatsifrats, the criminal Swiss Nazi Templars, well, they don't like that. Ku Klux Klan and criminal Swiss banks appeal for violence in Switzerland against American citizens. It's another video I made, uh, etc., etc. And they just say, well, it is um, a Verleumdung, that's what they say. It's not true, so we have to put you in prison. Just like that. That's Switzerland. So for three and a half months I spent like an insect in a glass jar with dry saturated thick air until my poor wife borrowed 9,000 Swiss francs together getting me out on November 1st having lost 30 kilos in three and a half months picking up a human wreck not even the shadow anymore of the man she lost in there. It's like a kidnapping in Bogota, Colombia or buy some Swiss Mafia with a ransom to pay. So they controlled what I ate, what I drank and what I breathed. And everyone's hair was falling out on top because of whatever else they did to us. Yes, this is the real Switzerland under some thick layers of clean neutrality swindle. And I want to witness about that here. So at least they don't entirely get away with our octagon crimes against humanity. So I don't know if it really works. Here you can see how my hair has fallen out here. You know, because whatever they did, no oxygen, probably put something in our food. See, I never had this before. You know, I'm, I'm a wreck. And, and everybody else had it as well, you know. Immigrants, you know. Um, Mostly foreigners inside there, innocent people. Please someone help my wife and children because now they're being directly attacked as well. As they arrested my wife too on December 21st, 2015. Making her responsible for some bogus threat mails the Swiss Nazi authorities sent to themselves by hacking into our computer using our IP address in a criminal way in order to lie more things together to put innocent people away in some high security prison to silence people up from telling the truth about Octagon. I leave the address and telephone number of my family here in the YouTube channel for people to help them. They should leave the country. And so here is the new, my new email address because they hacked the other one. There's the other one, they hacked it. I, I can't even get into it anymore. They took the computer away, you know, so they have ways to do this. And here's my address. My wife is Regina Loy. Telephone number, it's all here. Um, yeah, they're taking my wife and children now as well. Um, uh, it's horrible. They, they're organized criminals. Please help them. I, there's nothing I can do anymore, you know. So this is in my channel, if you click the about section, in French that, it's, that uh, that's, it stands à propos de, in German, über uns. So this is for me only, and here you can read to my wife. Well, she has no computer anymore, uh, telephone should be working. 
So on Sunday night, December 20th, 2015, I had a premonition and saw them. So I told my wife that the state terrorist in blue would come in the morning after my vision. And yes, at 6.30 in the morning, the house was crawling with them and many cars outside. Another house search based upon their own lies arresting me and my wife. And during the premonition the night before, I was awake. So I saw them. I saw the boots, the blue pants. I, I saw them. My wife is my witness. I saw it. Since the corrupt Swiss police stole our computer during the house search on uh, December 21st, 2015, I have no more access to my own email. Supposing they hacked it to send some punishable mails in my name. I infiltrated the Swiss Octogon over a long period of time and presented solid proofs about them through my videos for which they destroyed me and my precious little family, confirming the weight of my documentaries, them being afraid the truth will reach too many people. Please someone tell my wife that I made this video and that I love her and the children. Maybe I'll never see them again. I feel very sick already, so I thought, instead of getting slowly tortured and murdered by the criminal Swiss state gangsters, I'd rather split, hope, and make some more videos. But I need your help for that, needing people to house me, for which you can use that new email address on my channel to contact me. I really need your help now, so I can get some more astonishing truth out for you, for our children and our future.